In the William Wood Cluster, we have a signed standing committee. The committee is made up of members of staff from all of the schools across the cluster. This committee has, over the past few years, developed a comprehensive programme of study for science, taking children from nursery to the end of the broad general education. At early level, children learn about science by investigating and exploring their environment through purposeful play. Hands up if you would like to come and do the blindfold experiment. You go and get something for them to smell. What do you think it is? That's a good guess. What is it, Rona? It is. Shampoo. Shampoo. Is it a fruity smell? Yeah. So what made you think it was pear juice? Good answer. Now, what can you see different about the owl's eyes compared to the horse's eyes? They're like owls there on the front of the... Aha, and they're very big eyes, aren't they? Yeah. Why do you think he has to have very big eyes? So we didn't just use our taste buds to help us when we were tasting. What else did we use in this experiment? We used our tongue, so that was our taste buds. What else did we use? Look, look. we had a little look, so we used our sight. And then what else did we do? Smell. smell. Mm. So we used our sight, we used our smell, and we used our taste. taste. But one of our senses tricked us. Because when we looked at the juice, it looked pink. pink. So we thought it was strawberry. strawberry. How could it be pink? Like? Well, that's exactly how I managed to trick you. Because I changed the colour of this juice. And that's was what... It, red it was not red apples. I used a special colour that can go into food to make it look different. So it's very important that we use all of our senses to help us when we are tasting. Because sometimes our eyes can trick us, can they? And we're listening to noises on the whiteboard. Well, this is a guitar, and, and uh, it's like, um, them bits are like when you can change um, the uh, sound. See, see if like, scientists do like lots of things around the world, like look, see if a movie or something, like you can get all kinds of scientists. It's a sponge, paper, tin file. Cotton wheel, more foil. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what they feel like using mm -hmm. our descriptive words? Bunch feels like hard and rough. This bit feels like soft. This feels like crunchy and... Hands up boys and girls if you like science. And have you enjoyed the workshops? One of the major strengths of cluster working in William Wood has been the development of the primary programme of study. It was developed by practitioners for practitioners and has been moderated and evaluated by primary and secondary staff across the cluster. The programme covers the totality of experiences and outcomes from early level to second to ensure continuity in learning experiences. It provides teachers with a structure which is flexible to take account of their knowledge and expertise in teaching science. Each unit has a PowerPoint, teacher's guide and assessment built in. There are links to other curricular areas which have been, have been identified to provide opportunities for interdisciplinary learning. Topical science is taught throughout the year. Children's learning experiences are assessed by what they say, write, make and do. The programme continues to be evaluated by practitioners and will be collated by science champions and the standing committee. 
The introduction of Science Champions has had a positive impact on teacher confidence and learners' experiences in the cluster primaries. Funding from the Scottish Government has provided training by the Scottish Schools Education Resource Centre, or CERC, to design a primary cluster programme in science. This training has been authority-wide, with each school having one or two science champions trained. High-quality CPD and funding from CERC has supported science champions to take science forward and provide opportunities for collegiate working across the cluster. The programme has been evaluated very positively by the Robert Owen Centre at Glasgow University, with evidence of increased teacher confidence and expertise. CERC resources, the programme of study, relevant documentation and useful websites are available for practitioners on a shared cluster site on GLOW. Well, the cluster working that we have um, is really strong. Um, we have very strong links with the high school, which has impacted very positively on the teaching and learning within the classroom setting. We have transition units in place for our primary seven children, and as a result of the audit that we, we took and the evaluation that we, we, we undertook at the end of last session, um, it became aware that it was quite a challenging um, area that they did. It was all about DNA and chromosomes, etc. So as a cluster um, and having spoken with the teachers etc we decided that we should extend the programme of work down to the primary sixes so that the foundations would be built in so that when they got to primary seven to talk about cells etc and DNA um, that the knowledge would already be there. Um, so this is what's happening next term with the primary sixes. There's a microscopy unit now in place um, there's videos available online through the, the Cluster Glow group which helps the, the classroom teacher um, with the, the, the teaching of the unit. We're going to watch a video, first of all, Kaya, which is going to teach you about how to handle and how to use a microscope. And then we're going to get some time today to have a look at some slides. When carrying a microscope, always use two hands. Push one hand underneath the base and one at the neck of the microscope. When using a microscope, you need to know all the different parts of the microscope and your worksheet will show you this. You have a lamp down here which you can turn on using this switch here. This dark piece of metal is called the stage and you can use the rough focus wheel to make sure that your stage is at the lowest point before viewing a microscope. You can use the rough focus wheel to move the stage up and down. You've also got the fine focus wheel which can make your image clearer. These are our objective lenses. You've got stage clips on the stage, these hold your slide in place. You would look through the eyepiece and through the objective lens. You should always start with the smallest objective lens. So to view a slide, place your slide on the stage and hold in place with the stage clips. Make sure your stage is at the lowest point using the rough focus wheel. Make sure your lamp is on and that your objective lens is at the lowest lens. Then view through the eyepiece to see your specimen. Okay, it all seems very simple. We're going to get out some slides just now. And what, who can remember what the first thing we need to do when you have a microscope? Oh my gosh, that's so weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember from last year what field of view meant? If I was to say, draw what you've seen in your field of view, what would that mean that I was asking you to do? What, we, what you could see in the wee circle. Girls, did you hear that? Innovative units of work are developed at all levels and stages. One of our most recent developments has been a cell biology unit. This particular unit has been developed for pupils in the upper primary. Pupils gain opportunities to carry out practical work using microscopes. A series of videos have been produced to support the delivery of this unit. Pupils are assessed using self-assessment and peer assessment and teachers will use the same criteria to assess pupils formally as and when they are ready. The transition unit is a unit of work that is used for children in P6, P7, S1 and S2. 
One of the key advantages of our science transition unit is that the young people, regardless of their cluster primary school, uh, are able to participate in exactly the same lesson. And so when, uh, when they come to us in secondary school, it means that we are aware of the, the, the skills, the science skills and the knowledge that they have. And ultimately, it improves the quality of teaching and learning that takes place in the science lessons here at William Wood High School. We have to have the rocket built so that tomorrow when you come to science, we get the goggles on, we take it outside, we get the apparatus and we try and launch them out in the football park. You go in a cell, take your rounds and some of them Now it doesn't really matter how big or small a cone shape is, because we can cut it later, but once you get the sellotape on, that's when my hand can come away. This is a and that sort of thing. I think the forecast is alright tomorrow, so the plan is we're going to go outside and we'll see who can get the rocket to travel the furthest. I need to speak to you about a couple of safety things before we do that. And the first one is the obvious one, we have to protect our eyes, because some of these rockets have got quite sharp edges on them. Brilliant, Chloe. Can you choose your angle as before? Move the yellow switch when you're happy, and I'll apply the pressure, right? So just get ready on my signal. So we're all behind. Chloe's got her goggles on. Three, two, one. Wow. Chloe, that's excellent. That's super. That's going to be a very hard one for you to beat, Daisy. The transition unit that we've been developing over the past five or six years has had a huge impact on our science faculty. Um, at the start of that process, five years ago, um, we had 18 science teachers, whereas at the moment we've got 21. Our technician team has increased as well in number. The number of young people picking science subjects at S3 through to S6 has increased dramatically. There has been a continued improvement um, in the, the attainment of the young people and also in terms of the, the numbers of children who are picking physics, chemistry and biology from S3 to S6. Uh, and we really are reaping the rewards from that at SQA level. Innovative units of work are developed at all levels and stages. One of our most recent developments has been a cell biology unit. This particular unit has been developed for pupils in the upper primary. Pupils gain opportunities to carry out practical work using microscopes. This particular unit of work asks that pupils take on the profile of being a forensic scientist. One of the techniques explored and delivered as a practical experiment is a DNA fingerprint. The context of this scenario is changed on a yearly basis to make it relevant to the pupils. This year, the context of the DNA fingerprint was the Commonwealth Games taking place in Glasgow in 2014. Pupils were asked to carry out a DNA fingerprint on each athlete and then advise the athletes of which sport they should pursue that would enable them to achieve a Commonwealth gold medal. The Science Champion Initiative was established across East Renfrewshire Council in 2012. This initiative has gone from strength to strength. Each primary school has a designated Science Champion and their role is to support and develop the learning and teaching of science across the cluster. This has led to an increase in teacher confidence of the teachers delivering the science programme of study and more challenging and enjoyable pupil experiences in science across the cluster. So what we've been working hard to achieve uh, over the past five or six years is to make sure that uh, the children in primary have a really good transition coming up to secondary and that's why we, we, um, we've introduced things like the new transition unit and things that you've been involved with Neil like our P7 club and our S1 science club. How have you and your sixth year colleagues um, enjoyed being part of those initiatives? Well it's, for a start it's been very enjoyable and I think it's been very beneficial to us because we yeah. it's given us a chance to improve our leadership and communication skills mm -hmm. because it encourages the older pupils in the school to perhaps help out with the younger children and also um, improves our own communication and leadership skills so we sort of develop as people just by helping out and it's, for us it's also active learning skills. Mm -hmm. I think it's also been beneficial for the younger children to have sort of the experience of being with older children who've gone through all the school. The overview has had a big impact as well. We've, we've created an overview um, which basically outlines all the experiences and outcomes that need to be covered from mm -hmm. early level right through to third level. So that um, absolutely every experience and outcome well, has been hit absolutely. and not been repeated. Um, but everything's gone into in depth at each level. Well, I know from the feedback from teachers with regards to the CPD that we provided... They loved it. it, it huge, raised their confidence, um, definitely, especially because it was outside agencies that came in Absolutely. and they showed them resources that we could use that were cheap, everyday 
things that you could find in the home or in the schools that you could use in the classroom as well. Even though I had a science background, um, my confidence as a teacher has really grown because I've learned a lot of new things that I wasn't I wasn't aware of. Um, and that I can then impact into the class and take on into the class. The progressive incoherence of planning documents mm -hmm. and, and lessons has been created and, and, like I said before, made available to all the staff yeah. within, the, the, um, within our cluster. Um, but that's really helped with regards to the teaching of science because, like you would said, Charlene, there's no duplication and there's no nope. gaps. So that, and that will help with assessment and moderation, mm -hmm. etc. cetera, too. Um, they're used dreadfully in the class as an ideal they're, format. And they're, they're, they're user they're friendly as well. You mm -hmm. can pick it up and use it easily enough. Mm -hmm. And the assessment methods that go along with it mean that you're, um, you can easily assess the children throughout the learning as well. They're, the actual record sheets are easily used too. The teacher's guides um, are there and the PowerPoint. Yeah, etc. They all provide the a skeleton resources. for learning. So teachers have always got something there for each subject area, but then they can go off and there's well, they're still obviously room to be responsive to the children and exactly. what they want to investigate. Curriculum for Excellence is very much about doing that and providing yeah. the breadth, but also the depth of learning. So you can so link it into other topics within the yes, classroom uh -huh. as well. And again, the feedback from that has been very positive mm -hmm. from the teachers. But again, enjoying using the moving planners. forward, uh -huh, we need to evaluate as a cluster of where we're at and, mm -hmm. and how we're going to take that can forward. Further move forward yeah. Yeah. As a classroom teacher and actually coming from a science background, you know, I thought initially that you know teaching science would be easy, but actually there's so many areas of science that I wasn't sure about, and um, through the various different kinds of um, t ongoing training and um, the role that that has played has given me lots of ideas as a classroom teacher to um, bring into the classroom um, things that I would never have thought of before. Um, also, the new planners that have been um, produced have been a great help as well because sometimes it's, it's given us a starting point as a teacher to where to go and um, you don't always necessarily have to use everything that's in there but it gives you, um, they give you guidelines as to maybe websites that you can go to, resources you can use and it also gives you an idea about the assessment that you might want to take and you as a classroom teacher can then decide well what's um, ideal for my children in the class, um, is that relevant to them and then you can pick and choose which bits that you, th you would like to have um, to impact the children in your class there particularly and obviously you take on board what their ideas are as well. So that's been a really good resource to, to have um, available. Um, we made posters about um, about the, the results of the PH paper and um, we assessed each other's with post-it notes. And doing it, we had to use teamwork because sometimes it's really hard to cut the bottle and make the filter. Uh, we used to make the water filters sand, uh, gravel, and like dirty water. Like you get like, and you get water, and then you put compost in it, and then you pour it in, and it would go down. But this one, um, we didn't put any compost in to see what would happen and it just stayed the same since it was already dirty and thick. Because there was nothing to filter through. So with this one we did the compost mixture and all the compost stayed at the top of it and all the water went down through the sand and through the filter paper and came out cleaner. The work of the Science Committee has resulted in excellent relationships between primary teachers and the Williamwood High School Science Department. Strong partnerships have been developed with outside agencies such as CERC and STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics along with the Glasgow Science Centre, Glasgow University, Strathclyde University to name but a few. These partnerships have enhanced teaching and learning of science across the cluster and pupils benefit greatly from this. A key feature of the Science Standing Committee is to develop innovative and challenging units of work, along with establishing science clubs across the cluster, hosting a biannual STEM fair at Williamwood High School, attended by pupils and parents, and the introduction of pupil challenges such as engineering your own robot. Williamwood High School science faculty has recently introduced Excellence in Science Merit Badges. Pupils are encouraged to be creative within the classroom and are rewarded for outstanding effort in areas of their science work. 
you know where the line is? Well, halfway between Busby Library and Dan Sink's studio is an arch bridge. It looks just like that, but we have a river flowing through it. And um, so the next time you see that, you walk maybe over it, or you go into the library, you know that's an arch bridge, and that acts in compression. I'm going to do a demonstration of that short. Put your hands together like that, and push just slightly, don't push each other over. Now, there you go, that is compression. So you have compression, pushing down, your weight is down onto the floor. This is compression, pushing together, um, and then compression back down the floor again. So you've made a human arch bridge. Now, we made a poster last year about brain technology, and um, the people came from Strathclyde University, and before it I knew absolutely nothing about brain technology, um, and after I knew lots. They, and they explained it all. We did lots, after that, we did lots of research about the brain and uh, what it was. And we had come up with an idea of a piece of brain technology that we could use in the future. So um, after that, our, all, we were split into four groups and we came up with the poster. A judging panel who picked the best poster and our poster won out of 110 posters. Our idea was to have a memory earpiece for people with Alzheimer's so that it stored their memories and um, it just come back to them. So our, um, our name for our thing was your whole life memory behind your ear. Now that we've done this, the people really shared what they do because they worked as it. And now I'd really like to do something like that when I was older. And I thought it was really interesting, really good fun. One final thing, Neil. Um that we've been trying to, to encourage is uh, young people going on to study science degrees at university and perhaps not just science degrees but STEM degrees, you know, science, mathematics, engineering type degrees. You, could you maybe give me a flavour for how the, the, the sort of courses that yourself and your friends in sixth year have applied to for next year? I, I think actually there's a large amount of people in our school that are now applying to science related degrees. So really? medicine or pure sciences or engineering seem to be the most common ones now. I think that's really? Would that a be testament to, to how good our education has been. Do, do you think that um, an engineering degree, for example, has got the same level of appeal as a, as a traditional degree, like a, a medicine or a, um, a law degree? I, I think it's perhaps even uh, overtaken medicine and law now because I think lots yeah. of people view it as a credible degree that will lead to good career uh, prospects. The work of the Science Standing Committee has had a tremendous impact on teaching and learning and improving children's experiences in science across the cluster. This impact can be seen in an increase in teacher confidence, promoting deeper thinking and understanding of scientific ideas, a focus on inquiry skills, and in Williamwood High School, a greater uptake of science subjects in S3 to S6 and outstanding levels of attainment in science in the SQA examinations. Many pupils at the end of the science programme of study and the end of their Williamwood High School science experience go on to study science and engineering at university. Mm -hmm.